We've said for years, like, the church is more than a building. Like, this is not, this is more than what we do on, you know, we, church is more than a building that meets together on Sunday morning. Um, and what I've been encouraged by is the way that, like, our congregation stepped it up during that. Like, they, they really have stepped it up in terms of going out and serving. We've done probably more ministry in the eight weeks than we did the previous eight weeks because I think the church just kind of responded like, hey, this is a crisis, and rather than run away from crisis, we're going to run into crisis. Okay, I'm uh, Russ Adcox. I'm the lead pastor at uh, Murray Hills Church, and we're a non-denominational church here in Columbia. The, I, I guess the first thing I thought of was, was kind of like everybody else, and when you first start seeing the news, you think it's, it's over there, somewhere else it's not affecting me like it, it was kind of I'm watching it but not really concerned because it doesn't seem to be anything that's coming here and uh, I just kind of you know like the, it just gradually ramped up like it went from being something in China and something over in Europe to then something in the U.S. but I never thought it'd get to the point to where you know we're canceling church services and businesses are shutting down and you know we're practicing social distancing I mean honestly when I look back two months ago I never thought it would get to this level. The first week where we really started considering, wow, we, we may need to not have services. And no, nothing was shut down yet. There wasn't a safer at home order. But uh, I, I went to breakfast with uh, some guys that I go to breakfast with at least once a month. And we were just talking about it. And it was, that was on a Friday. Church was coming up on Sunday. And I was like, I don't, I don't really know what to do. You know, I don't, I don't know what we, should, what we should do in regards to church. And uh, one of them was like, you need to cancel. I went and you know, got on Google and looked at that and saw like this, this thing is going to get bad. And I ended up talking with our county mayor about it just to kind of get some information. And what we decided to do the very first Sunday was uh, we had church at the building, but we encouraged people not to come. And that was a really weird thing. We said, hey, we're going to be online. We're going to let it, it's still going to be open if you want to show up. Uh, but we encourage you not to show up. We usually normally have three services. We had one service that day, about 70, 80 folks showed up and we were, we were online. And uh, the very first guy in the building that morning was one of our oldest members. And he came walking in on his walker. And as soon as I saw him come through the door, I said, that's it, we're not having church next Sunday. Those are the folks that, that those are the stalwarts of Sunday services like, if the doors are open, they're going to be here. And so as soon as I saw him coming in, I was like, that's it. We're going online only. And so we've, we've been online only for the last eight weeks now. Our reaction has been really good. I think our folks have been really flexible about it. Um, I haven't gotten any complaints from folks about, you know, I can't believe we're online only and things like that. I think some people are having a little fatigue with it. But I've, I've been really encouraged by how flexible and patient our congregation's been with it. One of the challenging components of it is, you know, church is set up for relationship and it's set up for, you know, fellowship. And that's, that's a big core component of what we do. And when, when we have to physically distance ourselves from each other, it's hard to do those things. Um, small groups can meet over Zoom, but there's, it's just a, there's a whole different feel meeting over Zoom than there is meeting in person. And uh, we've experienced as a church staff, we've been having meetings on Zoom and we've kind of had Zoom fatigue. Like we noticed that, you know, we, we get a little more uh, anxious over Zoom or we're, we're a little easier, you know, kind of bothered by things and things are on edge a little bit more. And so there's, there's, uh, there's something to being able to sit face to face and talk with somebody and see somebody's body language and see the way they're responding to you. And when the church doesn't get to do that, it, it makes it hard to do ministry. Uh, I've been encouraged by the response to online worship. We, we've had more people joining than I thought we would have. Uh, people are still giving, people are still doing ministry, people are still engaging with the message and the worship and those things. So I've been encouraged by that too. People doing it together as a family. We've been encouraging people to send us pictures of their families worshiping together in the living room. And uh, a lot of people are doing it and I've been encouraged by that. This, is, this forever changes the way that we view our live stream and our online audience. We, we've always treated the live stream as kind of a, an add-on. Like, yeah, we have, we have worship on Sunday morning, and if you're sick or out of town and you can't make it, you're always welcome to join online. And we're going to start viewing online as basically another service of our church. So this is, this is going to be our, you know, our fourth service is our online service. And rather than just tracking attendance, 
we're looking at engagement, you know, our, and, and we have to th change how we engage people online because uh, engagement online is engagement. They are engaging with the church. They are participating in worship. They are engaging in a message. And so how do we, how do we help facilitate that more? And it, it also is going to become, I think, a great entryway into faith for a lot of people because one of the hardest things about faith in church is showing up on a Sunday morning when you don't know anybody, you don't know anything about the faith tradition, you don't know anything about how worship works. That's, that's an awkward thing. And um, online church gives people a chance to check it out from a distance and it's a very safe place, it's anonymous, and they can just kind of watch and see that. And so they have an opportunity to explore faith before they step their foot into a, into a church building. I think it also makes us much more cognizant about uh, just doing ministry. You know, that, that the, the world has changed and a lot of times the church is slower to respond to change than, than the culture. Culture is always outpacing church, but uh, it gives us an opportunity to say, hey, we want to, some of these changes we've got to embrace if we're going to reach future generations. I think in the next month, we plan to slowly return to normal. And so what we're trying to do is kind of a phased return to in-person services on Sunday morning. So we hope that in the next couple of weeks, we can say, hey, small groups can start meeting in their homes together. You might even gather as a small group to watch worship together rather than just your family watching worship online. You know, you might gather with your small group and you all participate together in that. Student ministry can start meeting again. Um, and then we kind of gradually build our way up to in-person services again. But we know that once we do that, a lot of people will still choose online. I think there's a lot of people right now that are thinking, man, we just can't wait to get back in that building. And as soon as we open the doors up, they're gonna be here. And there's a lot of people that are still uncomfortable getting out. And they're still a little leery and thinking this is too early to open. And so we're just trying to show grace to, to all of them. My plan is to basically say, here's how we're gonna reopen. This is what it's gonna look like. If you're comfortable with it, then by all means come back. If you're not, just hang out online a little bit longer. But I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be a slow return to normal, if normal. Like I don't know what the, you know, the, you know people are using the phrase the new normal. I, I think that could be the reality with us for, for a lot longer. One of the things that I've loved about what's happened in Columbia and Murray County is I feel our community has come together in a situation like this. We're doing what we need to do. I know some people get frustrated with some of the, the orders coming out of the state or they get frustrated because their business is shut down. But for the most part, I've just seen people supporting each other. I've seen churches supporting each other. I've been talking to other pastors that are telling me their return plans and you know, we're supporting their return plans, they're supporting ours. Uh, you know, churches, people from other churches have been watching different streams on there. And that's been a cool thing that's been able to happen here. I've been able to participate in worship at Connection Church and Destiny and some other churches that I normally wouldn't be able to because I'm preaching on Sunday. But now that I'm online, I can kind of participate with some of my brothers and sisters. But uh, I've just seen this community as a whole pull together, the business community, the church community, nonprofit community. And, and I think that's been a blessing. I will, I will not say the pandemic is a blessing, but there's been blessings that's come out of the pandemic. And one of those is just kind of focusing in on, here's what really matters. This matters way more than all the other stuff we tend to fight and divide ourselves over. And I hope that continues. That's my message for the community is, let's continue to show grace to each other. Let's continue to give each other the benefit of the doubt. Uh, let's don't politicize this thing and divide over this thing. Uh, let's just continue to pull together as one community.